Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I wanted to thank everyone who watched my last couple videos on my channel and for anyone who reached out to me, thank you so much for engaging with me. I love hearing from you and I was already super excited to share what I've been working on and why I've been working on it, but now that you guys are getting excited too, it makes me even more thrilled. So <laughs> thank you so much, I'm getting super hyped up. So in case you missed my last couple videos, I, in the first one, talked about the five things I wish I had known when I first tried watercolors. So um, I, when I first tried watercolors, it was a very negative experience. I was pretty young, but I first tried them and it did not go well. And so I decided I would never work with watercolors again. Years later, I thought, okay, I'm gonna give them another try. And it just went really well, actually. Surprisingly, something just clicked and I got it. And since that point, I've been working with watercolors for over a decade. I think they are so much fun. I love them. They're my all-time favorite material to work with. And through my time working as an artist and giving kind of short in-person workshops, I have come to realize that other people have had a similar experience or they're a little too intimidated by them and have never even tried them before or they've tried them and worked with them a bit but they just want to go more in depth and really learn more about watercolor and how it works. So because of that and that um, very first experience I had with watercolors, I decided to develop um, online watercolor courses that are really geared towards helping anybody be able to start painting with watercolors, even folks who've never picked up a paintbrush before. So I went into some detail about that in the first video, and then in the second video, I shared some demonstration of how Crayola watercolors, how they compare to a more professional level of watercolor and whether you can actually start out with them if that's what you wanna try when you first dip your toes into watercolor. So in today's video, I figured I would go over some general questions I've just gotten about watercolor, especially from my newsletter subscribers. And by the way, if you're not subscribed to my email newsletter, I would love for you to go do that. You can do so very quickly on my website, coreyfrankcreates.com. Scroll down to the bottom of any page, or if you are on the website for even, I think it's within like 10 seconds, a little pop-up will appear, and you'll be able to sign up for my email newsletter newsletter, which I send out once a week, but of course when I have like special deals and stuff happening, you'll hear from me a little more frequently. Also, when you sign up for that email newsletter, you will get my free guide of my favorite watercolor supplies. Just to kind of help you out if you're interested in diving into watercolors, you'll know what I would recommend. So I got some questions a while back from my email newsletter subscribers, I asked for some questions they may have about watercolor in general. And then also I've been getting throughout sharing info about the these online watercolor courses that I'll be launching. Um, I've been getting some questions about that. So I compiled some of those questions and I'm gonna answer them here for you today. Starting out, how do you handle making a mistake using watercolors? My hesitation with watercolor is that I don't think it's a forgiving medium. Is that true? And yeah, that can be one of the things that makes people hesitant to use watercolors is that it's a little bit more of a process to make corrections with watercolors, but it is possible. And the technique I use, I call paint lifting or lifting paint, which involves taking your brush, introducing a certain amount of water to your paper surface, and then trying to lift some of that paint off so you can get as close back to the white of the paper as possible. Now it can be harder with heavily staining colors. For the most part, you are not going to be able to use that technique to get back to a perfectly pristine white page when you've already laid paint down, but you can make those corrections with that paint lifting technique. And as far as it um, not being a very forgiving medium, um, I prefer to say that it just behaves differently than other types of materials we're used to. So again, you're not just able to erase or paint right over it. Um, but once you kind of understand how it works and its nature, you're able to kind of work within those parameters and it doesn't feel unforgiving. It just, it feels more natural. This is how watercolor behaves and this is how I respond to it. So again, a lot of those things about the nature of watercolor and all of that, I do go into more detail in the courses. 
What's the best way to frame a watercolor painting? I thought this was a really cool question and it's not covered in my watercolor courses because it's kind of a sort of secondary step. It's not about how to paint with watercolors, but kind of a next step after you've painted, how do you frame it? So this is a topic I could go really in depth with. So I'm gonna try and keep it brief here and just say kind of the standard things you want. So first of all, I think it's best to frame watercolor paintings with glass. So you want, a glass covering on them so it helps protect them and you want um, any material that is touching your watercolor painting so for instance like you have let's say you go to the store either you can find some at the thrift store that are decent quality and pretty cheap so <laughs> pro tip there but it, let's say you go to like a craft store and just buy a general um, pre-made frame. So you'd have your frame face down, you'd open up the backing, you would put your painting face down against the glass, and then they have a piece of cardboard that you can put in there to kind of help hold it in place when you then close the backing of the frame. I would recommend not using that cardboard because it's not acid free, it's not archival quality, over time it'll make your paper yellow. So you don't want to do that. I would recommend buying either some matte board or foam core board that is acid free and just making sure that any materials in the frame that are touching your painting are either the glass or an acid free backing material. I would definitely recommend if you're able to going to a professional framer, especially if it's a independent framer. Those support your local businesses. I always <laughs> suggest that if you're able to, and they're gonna give you the best guidance. All right, how long do I need to wait to move a painting before I start another one? And it really kind of depends, but the great thing about watercolor is it dries very quickly, unlike some other paints like oils. Oils can take a very long time to dry, sometimes even months. You don't have to worry about that with watercolor. I live in a pretty dry climate, so sometimes even within 20 to 30 minutes, my painting is completely dry and I can move it and move, go to the next one. But if you're in a little bit of a rush and need to move on to the next project, uh, as long as the puddles of water are absorbed in the surface, if your surface is still just like a little damp, but not like water and paint moving around everywhere and kind of beating up on the surface. As long as you don't have that happening, you should be able to very gently move it, keeping it level and flat like this and moving it to another flat surface and you should be just fine. So those are really kind of the general questions. Now I do want to get into some of the questions I had about the watercolor courses I will be offering. So the first one is, can anyone take the course? Absolutely, yes. I specifically designed all of these courses um, for people who maybe have never even picked up a paintbrush before. Obviously also for people who have been painting with watercolors but maybe just really wanna get into the nitty gritty details and techniques. But I designed it so anyone should be able to take it, starting really with the basic basics, building up your knowledge so that you gain the confidence uh, to be able to paint. Do I need to buy supplies for the class? Yes, in the very first video of each course, I go into a deep dive of supplies where I recommend different types of supplies from paper to paintbrushes to paints along with a few miscellaneous supplies. And um, I discuss supplies at a variety of kind of budget ranges so that you can choose what works best for you. Will you talk about mixing colors? That is gonna be in the intermediate watercolor and watercolor like a pro courses. So in the third module, I go into detail all about color. We're going to create a watercolor swatch guide that matches your paint palette. Also talk about the color wheel and color temperature. So really getting that color theory and knowledge down. And in there, I'll talk a little bit about how to mix your paints together. How long will it take to complete the course? So for the uh, watercolor basics course, it's roughly two hours worth of footage. And for the intermediate watercolor course, it's like three and a half hours roughly of watch time. And then for the watercolor like a pro course, it is roughly six and a half hours worth of uh, content. But you can break it up into smaller chunks. So each module includes shorter videos that are for the most part 20 minutes or less. You can approach it in bite-sized chunks and at your own pace. So it's very much a self-paced course. Do I have to finish the course by a certain deadline? No, you do not. So once you sign up for the course, you get instant access and you have all the videos that you'll be able to watch. So you can work at your own pace um, and take as long as you need. Are there scheduled dates or times when you'll be teaching the course? 
No, this is all pre-recorded content. So all the modules include videos and you'll be able to watch them. It's very like I'm showing on screen all of the techniques and the painting. So you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing, but it's pre-recorded. So you don't have to worry about making a certain class or scheduled time. How long do I have access to the course? You have access to the course for life. As long as I have the course available on the platform, you will be able to access it. So once you purchase the course, you get instant access, you can work at your own pace, and you have lifetime access to it. As long as you keep your account with the platform I'm using, it's called Teachable. So um, with a te you'll need to create a Teachable account and um, once you make that purchase, then you'll have access to it for life. What will I be able to complete when I graduate from this course? So let me go over that. With the Watercolor Basics course, by the end, you will have a completed painting that looks something like this. I'm gonna guide you through it step by step after teaching all the basics about supplies and then the tech hands-on techniques, and we'll be able to apply all that knowledge you get into completing a painting just like this. In the intermediate watercolor course, it's gonna be the same thing. It includes all the content from the basics course. So you'll complete this painting. And we also go in depth with color. So like I was mentioning earlier, you'll be able to create your own watercolor swatch guide. You will be able to print out this, this handout and create your own watercolor wheel and learn about the color temperatures. And then in module four, we're really gonna talk about kind of specifics of the painting process, preparing for more advanced paintings and things like that. Now with the Watercolor Like a Pro course, you have all the content from the Watercolor Basics and Intermediate Watercolor courses, as well as, so there's kind of four modules. So the Basics course includes modules one and two, the Intermediate Watercolor course includes modules one, two, three, and four, and then the Watercolor Like a Pro course includes all those modules, one, two, three, and four, along with a fifth module with a guided step-by-step -step instructional tutorial of how to do this uh, realistic watercolor apple. In addition to that, in every single module, you will get a bonus video that is not available in the basics or intermediate levels. So um, I'm gonna go into some specifics about the exact supplies I would recommend in the bonus video for module one. Module two, we will have a bonus video about creating more compelling compositions. Module three is where you will have that bonus video about mixing your own secondary colors together. And module four, I'm gonna take you through a bonus painting of how to keep your paintings loose. And we will be painting this tree together, walking you through it in real time. And then of course I'll, um, in addition to this final module, paint step-by-step -step guided painting of the apple, I will share some tips for success that have just helped me along the way with watercolors. So that is everything that you would get at each of these levels. So you would really, by the end, even with that basics course, in a relatively short amount of time, you would have enough knowledge to really start creating simple, elegant, beautiful paintings. You'll be able to show off to your friends and decorate your home and just really feel confident about it and just have fun. You'll, you're gonna have so much fun. This is so important is having fun when you're using watercolors. And then as you kind of build up over time, you'll kind of really level up those techniques and be able to move on to more advanced paintings. And then at that pro level, um, getting the guidance that you'll have access to for life to be able to paint an apple that looks something like this, nice and realistic. So just imagine that for, uh, in a relatively short amount of time, you're gonna really level up your watercolor skills and be able to impress your friends and family in that way. Now, of course, probably one of the most important questions that people are asking is, how much does the course cost? So that watercolor basics course is $49. The intermediate watercolor course is $109. And then the watercolor like a pro course is $299. But because I don't want cost to be a barrier, I do have a special deal coming and uh, I'm gonna be sharing more about that in just a couple days. So be on the lookout for my next video and for my email newsletter subscribers for my next email. So again, if you're not subscribed to my email newsletter, go to coreyfrankcreates.com and do that. So you can get those direct updates via email right to your inbox. So I'm gonna have a special deal for you 
for a limited amount of time and I'm super excited for you to be able to get access to that. So more details to come on what that special offer will be so that you can really get into these courses and start becoming a watercolorist. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Tomorrow is Easter. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. So if you celebrate, I hope you have a fantastic Easter. And uh, yeah, please leave any comments for me on this video or on any of my social media accounts, which are uh, included in the description of this video. You can also reach out to me directly via email. Art at CoreyFrankCreates.com is my email address. You can ask any questions directly there. So yep, would love to hear from you. Thank you so much. And I will see you in just a couple days.